rightly said that today the topic, uh, the mega processes or tumor processes, is a important topic. I think must to know for orthopedic surgeons, and uh, for I think general surgery residents they should also know because nowadays once uh, when you appear for the exams and you have any bone or soft tissue tumor cases, at least you should know the basics. So what is mega processes? what is customized or what is modular processes. So before I start, let me check my screen is visible. Is it the first slide, tumor processes? Uh, yes, sir, it's visible, sir. It's objective is coming. So before I start my talk today, so what are we going to learn today in this presentation? So one is the basic, what is tumor processes or mega processes, why these terms are used, a brief history, the different type of implants uh, that are uh, provided, indications, and most important, the advances in mega processes. And this is a common question which is asked in theory exams and even during practical. So once you come to the management, you are supposed to know the basics of it. So when we talk about mega processes, actually this is the correct terminology, mega processes. So mega, you know, big processes. So finally, it is the implant which is designed to replace the resected large bone defect. It is not just about the bone defect, but it replaces your bone, soft tissues, and other structures which provide stability. The tumor processes terminology is also the same. The only reason why we prefer to use mega processes because uh, once you are doing a tumor surgery, you are resecting a sarcoma or a benign tumor, then it is more aptly to say that it is a tumor processes. The If you are just using it for another reasons, like for revision uh, replacement procedure for another bone defect due to other reason, then the mega processes will be the right term. So what do we mean by them? When we talk, when we say uh, it's a mega processes or this is a uh, implant, uh, this is a normal processes. So you can see uh, the X-ray on the left side, that is a total knee replacement. In a normal scenario, if uh, there is distal femur and your proximal tibia, normally you replace the articular surface with the implants like you are seeing here. And on the other side, when there is sarcoma, you see that there is loss of the bone. So suppose if there is 15 centimeter bone loss and what structures are lost along with the bone? when we resect a tumor, it's not just the bony loss. So what you see here, there is bone loss, defect. There is loss of all the surrounding structures which provide stability, like you have ligaments, M's for in a knee region, you have MCL or LCL. Then you have cruciates, all these important ligaments are lost. The capsule around the joint, so all these important and critical structures which provide stability to your joint are lost. So doing with a conventional implant, sometimes it may not be possible to uh, make it useful after you resect your resection margins involve all these critical structures. So what do we need in that situation? So there is a spectrum. Tumor processes are just one end of the spectrum in between you may have uh, some ligament sparing or uh, enhancing type of implants, semi-constrained implants, and then finally the constrained implants. Similarly, when we uh, look at one of the common surgeries that we do is the total hip replacement. You cut the femoral neck and uh, the acetabulum part is uh, augmented with your acetabulum cup. But when we talk about resection in the tumor case, you resect everything. So what you see here right from your trochanter that is replaced by this prosthesis. Then you see there is a part in between. You can see this uh, tapering part here. That is where the two different components articulate. And what structure you see inside, it is the stem. So we will go into the details, but just this was a broad overview. The conventional difference when we uh, talk about the type of implant that we use in uh, joint replacement and when we use it after a large bony defect. 
so though we are becoming more familiar in last two decades but if we look at the history uh, in 1940s the first endoprosthetic was used by austin moore and uh, uh, we can see on the internet also this pictures are available from 1940s where uh, for a bony lesion, this implant was used. So probably it was one of the most primitive form where it was used. And nowadays we have come across a lot of new developments. So if I talk about the changes in the last two decades, uh, two to three decades actually. So one, initially in 80s, 1980s, and uh, up to 2000, and even now in India, what we see commonly that Sometimes people advise radical amputation for bone cancer, but slowly the limb salvage is taking over. And in fact, the truth is that in more than 95% of my cases, I plan for limb salvage surgery in bony cancer. And what you see here is the metallic implant, which is a mechanical type of uh, reconstruction. What is further evolving is that now we are moving more towards biological reconstruction, what you see here. And this is a picture just after cryotherapy of the cancerous bone with liquid nitrogen. So today we are not going to go into the deep of other forms, but it is restricted to this tumor processes. The most important change is not the use of limb salvage or the implant, but it is about the survival of the patients. So from the pre-chemo era, the chemotherapy was introduced somewhere in the 70s. The survival was only 20%, even with amputation. Even if the patient has a tumor or uh, cancer in the foot or hand, and if you amputate it one or two joints above, if that case is chemosensitive, like osteosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma, if you don't give chemotherapy, the survival is going to be very, very poor, whether you do amputation or limb salvage. Now, with the multimodality treatment, which includes chemotherapy, the survival is somewhere in the range of 75 to 80%. So a very basic question is, what, what about if we do a limb salvage or if we do amputation, whether the recurrence rates and survival are going to change? Is it higher risk with tumor processes? When we think just logically, then of course, uh, the tumor processes when we use, when we use uh, a limb salvage surgery, the margins are going to be closer, but it has shown that there is no effect in survival rates. Either you go for amputation or you go for limb salvage surgery. In fact, limb salvage surgery provides a better quality of life after these procedures. Of course, the risk of local recurrence may be a bit higher, but that's why it is very important that you are trained in the process of limb saving surgeries. You know the oncological principles. If you compromise on oncological principles, then, then it's a blunder. And I have discussed in my previous uh, lectures also that we most important is getting a clear oncological margins and then only you think of get planning a reconstruction modality. So the changes which have taken over is one, the use of chemotherapeutic drugs, which have improved the overall survival the use of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which shrinks the tumor size, uh, helps getting better planes for surgical resection, and thus facilitates your limb salvage surgery. The radiation therapy, understanding of the tumor biology, the newer modalities like you have navigation and other factors, all these leads to improvement. I think very improvement, a big challenge which used to persist was the availability of mega processes, which is sorted out now. Nowadays, we have the guidelines, NPPA guidelines, and these processes, which used to cost many lakhs, are now brought under NPPA capping and somewhere between 1.2, 1.3. Depends on what type of implant you use. Uh, they, they can be easily arranged and they can be you know, used for a limb salvage procedure. So there are different factors which have led to our success in these limb salvage surgeries. So when the question is asked about mega processes, so you must know the uh, definition and then comes your indications, where do we use it? So like I shown, one, after tumor surgical resection. So of course, when we do limb salvage surgery, 
we need to reconstruct it, especially if the joint is involved. So we do it in sarcomas and even in benign bone tumors when it is beyond the uh, scope of reconstruction, like giant cell tumors. Sometimes the tumors has perforated the cortex in three dimensions or the articular surface is damaged because of the tumor, then we need to do reconstruction with mega prosthesis. The second indication after in joint replacement, though normally we don't use them, but sometimes in advanced arthritis with uh, when your collaterals are damaged, in those situations, you may use a semi-constrained type of implant. Another important role when we have revision joint surgery, so probably the salvage comes with the use of mega prosthesis. With every wear and tear of the implant, you have bone loss, you have loss of the ligaments and other sub supporting and surrounding structures. In those situations, these mega prosthesis are salvage options. Post-traumatic defect, I have used these tumor processes in multiple such cases because of accident, trauma, even gunshot injuries. Many patients uh, from, uh, especially from Iraq and those areas, they present to me with large bone defects and where we can uh, use the mega processes to make them walk. Uh, sometimes when in uh, community trauma where uh, the joint is completely shattered and it is beyond the scope of reconstruction or it develops arthritis, these mega prosthesis comes handy in giving the patient a fruitful life, a painless and early mobility. In other bone defects as well, sometimes because of infection, in healed infections where it has healed and uh, it has uh, totally gone, in those situations, we may use these tumor processes. So we must be clear about the indications broadly these five forms and you can elaborate and i know students are very good in elaborating on paper you can you can write anything <laughs>